agenda that was pulled together by folks just throwing at us things we need to talk about. Um, so what I would really like to be able to do today is, first of all, limit discussions to the time frame and the topics at hand, because there's a lot to do in a short amount of time. And then I would, I would also like to see, <clears throat> to see if we can get persons of responsibility for each of these topic items, or for as many topic items that deserve a person of responsibility to come back and talk to the board, the, to the committee, at a later time. Pardon me, I should have had something to drink. Do you want me to get I can grab a glass of water. No, that's good. Any additions or changes to the agenda? I'll take that as a no. Excellent, we just gained a couple of minutes. Public comments, that would be you, sir. None, okay. Gained another two minutes, excellent. So, uh, one thing I wanna do is uh, stand corrected on a number of my comments about how meetings get called and uh, what is public and what is not public. Uh, some of my comments to individuals were incorrect. I stand corrected. And I just want to make sure that we're all in agreement that. Here comes Dan. Hi, Dan. How are you? You, 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 have, you, you have to sit over there. I have to sit over there whether I want to or not. That's right. <laughs> And you just interrupted my mea culpa. I was just saying that I stand corrected on what I've said in the past about public meetings and how they're handled and how they need to be announced. And I just want to make sure that everybody understands that all meetings of this committee and any subcommittees or any work groups or any such endeavors that we pursue as a group um, need to be need to be, all need to be in accordance with the law. Uh, any disagreement with that? Just one quick comment, I just like to thank Becca for taking care of putting the agenda together and getting it out to everybody. Always, so this is she's great. great. Absolutely, thank you Becca. And, and she sent me, by the way, Becca also sent me an email. All right. Becca also sent me an email requesting that we get her the media, the minutes uh, immediately, if not sooner, so that she can get them posted the way they need to be. I think she might have only sent that email to me. Okay, so we've gained a couple of minutes, excellent. So there's a handful of topics to go through, and as we go through them, it would be great to have some discussion. I want to limit the discussion to the topic. I want to limit the time to the times noted. And I would, I would also like, if necessary, that somebody stand up and say, I'd like, I'd like to investigate this topic and bring information back to the committee. Uh, so I put it out there now. Is there any discussion on the naming and branding for the DBA doing business as? Well, I guess I'll just get started because <clears throat> with my initial push to get this on the ballot and get us constituted. I mean, Senator Clinton said that was, um, I don't want to say off the cuff, but it, seems, it seemed appropriate, it seems clear. Um, and I think, I mean, I, I, I personally like it. I think it's simple. I know there was some, some discussion about whether it's the most descriptive or most correct um, name for this. But uh, I mean, I, I, I personally stand by Probably, I mean, while I'm interested in this discussion, it's probably not appropriate for me to be the person of, you know, person of responsibility for this because I have, I mean, was, if I had my druthers, I would just keep it the way it is. A stated preference? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, I don't have like an immediate stated preference. I don't think that it, I don't think Central Vermont Internet's great for a, from a market or marketing perspective. Um, I do have experience in branding and marketing. I'm happy to, to you know, take, out, take this on and try and put together like a rudimentary uh, brand platform and a list. I would put together a list of suggestions of names to bring back to the committee along with rationale behind each name, basically. 
uh, for further discussion. Does that make sense to people? I mean, if, if, if anybody else would prefer to do it, let me know. But I do have plenty of information. Have we already registered a name with the Secretary of State? Yes. As Central Front Internet? Correct. Okay. So not Communications Utility District, a Union District, right? Correct. So this would be a head question of doing business as names. Yeah. Right. Well, I think we can entertain a lot for that. We can change the name of the Secretary. It's, 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 it's a $25 fee or something. Uh, you mean, oh, to change the registra registered yeah. version? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, yeah, I can see, I mean, as a municipality, I think that might, we might need to look into that a little bit more. I mean, could Montpelier, as a town, change or change the name? The name. Oh, that's true. Uh, I'm sorry. But on the other hand, you know, we're at more of a consortium. Than a than a actual physical town with boundaries and residents and that sort of thing, um, and and maybe maybe be more flexible. But 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 on the other hand, I think it's really not that big deal to just have a doing business as another entity and just have that be the front. Like e EC Fiber chose a really awkward name to incorporate and to create their communications union district. Like it's East Central Vermont Communications Union District or something. Like that. It's just. Mm -hmm. EC, EC Fiber isn't, ain't, ain't, I mean, it's workable, it's serviceable, but even they acknowledged in their presentation that it wasn't an, a, a home run, you know. Well, with Central Front, Fiber <laughs> even more well, it's the same issue. <laughs> EC Fiber works. Also, uh, I mean, I'm, I, I will let you delve into uh, this, but, you know, the, the nice about the uh, Central Vermont Internet, of course, is that it's, um, Gives us some flexibility in how it's delivered, depending on uh, what's appropriate and densities, et cetera. The, you know, so it it doesn't tie us in just to fiber. And, and sort of logically constrains us to the central Vermont, so that we don't have folks in. Just talk to somebody in Waterford. They wanted to do something. I mean, they, they, they wanted to have faster internet. Not not the not the sort of town that we can reasonably reach out to and say, hey, <laughs> not really in the of Vermont. I think the use of the word internet, though, has implications if we want to carry backhaul to a tower, backhaul to a microcell. That's not internet. And internet also has jurisdictional issues, the use of the word internet, because internet is not regulated by the state and the FCC preempts. So we want to be careful here that we don't basically acknowledge that we're stepping outside of state jurisdiction to re be regulated as a uh, telecommunications utility. So I had hoped that we would actually resolve this today rather than kick it to another committee, to another committee meeting, to another board meeting, you know, two months down the line. With your recommendation? I, I recommended CV Fiber at the big first meeting just because we're building on the success of EC Fiber. And so is it not East Kingdom Fiber too? No, it's, no, it's called Kingdom Fiber. Kingdom, well, it's Kingdom Fiber, but Fiber seems to be the word for these communication communities. Fiber is... Well, Kingdom Fiber, Fiber is not in the communications industry, though. That is a, a for-profit owned by... Yeah, well, they, right. they, I was talking to folks about the Northeast Kingdom. They may end up needing a communications union district to fill the gaps that Michael doesn't want to cover. Uh, yeah. Can I ask, the, um, the, um, when you say research and development approach to naming, I mean, what, what does that mean? So what, what that means is that I would review comparable organizations, not just in Vermont, but throughout yeah. the United yeah. States. Um, I would probably pull those names apart and analyze them for their Research. implications, things like that. I'd review, yeah, the URLs, whether or not there's availability of an acceptable URL, um, and you know, and and basically write that up as a memo to the committee that you get a week in advance so you can review it, along with a list of recommendations based on that analysis. So, so your your sequence is you're imagining you chew on it for a while. Hand it back to this committee. We meet again. We'll make a recommendation. Talk about it more, and then hand that back to yeah. the to the, the board. Yeah. 
So it would yep. be this September governing board meeting that it yeah. might get resolved. How does that impact anybody's timing? Yeah, we're going to meet again before that meeting. So. Yeah. Soon. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just want to make sure everybody understands. I fully anticipate that this district will end up carrying different kinds of carriage of leasing dark fiber, carrying telecommunication services, uh, radio backhaul services for the public safety district. We cannot be limited to just internet. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, you know, but it, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, they're all packet switch networks, so. Yeah, AT&T is limited to telephone to telephone. That's why they, what, that's why they switched the abbreviation. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, no, I get it. Um, yeah. I, 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 I would like, I personally, I support you taking this and bringing the, yeah. Um, the kind of well thought through options. Does this need a motion? Is that how it works? I, don't, I mean, if, if we just, well, just, just, we just, just, just generally have consensus. Right, unless somebody's really disapproving, uh, you know, and violently otherwise. I mean, guess what you're hearing. We run on these EC5, I mean, uh, several fiber on there, and then several on Yeah, there, so yeah, yeah. Just two. There were other ideas fielded back at the last meeting. It was, it was right at the first meeting. Uh, yeah, that's, that's in the minutes. A, am I okay? So I can review the minutes, and then I mean, is it no. within the was it, is it within sort of the acceptable email thing to email and say if you have suggestions, send them to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as long as they're as long as they're they're one on one. One on one. All right. All right. Send some fiber. Yeah. Yeah. Fiber. Uh, all right. And. Can that part of your research uh, be availability of domain names and whatnot? Yeah, that's yeah, that was going to be part yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah, uh, availability of domain names, and you know, I might even not, not you know, I'll, I'll probably crowdsource a little bit too, so I'll bother some people that are, you know, make way more money than me on this. And there's some cool new top level domains too. <laughs> Yeah, CB Fiber at Gmail was not available. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, great. I figured Jeremy got it. Nope. Shall we move on? Yeah. Nice. Excellent. Cool. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. So the uh, the next discussion topic is research into finance and organizational structures. I don't know if anybody has any particular expertise or experience in that area. I'd ask for clarification of what it means. Organizational structures means D Corp, C Corp. I can, so yeah, I, I can, I think I can give some background on this. So the um, research into the, the financing, and this is, I think the idea here was to talk about the sequence over time of where the money is coming from. And we talked about this a bit, and EC Fiber talked about this a bit in terms of going to do the crowdfunding for the first few years, doing some initial limited uh, build-ups, and then switching to the revenue bonds. And this is the, this is sort of the party line that I've been towing since, I, since I've been talking to select boards and um, you know, talking to, to the media about it, that we would go and do some initial fundraising, and then the idea is that because we're a municipality, we can go and we can get these, um, these cheaper revenue bonds. So, um, are there other financing options? Somebody mentioned last time, you know, maybe we do a um, GoFundMe or uh, something like Kickstarter or something like that. And I think those are possibilities. I'm not sure that they make the most sense. Um, but I think talking about that financing timeline probably makes sense here today. Now, the, or the organizational structure, I think, also um, uh, ties into the uh, potential operating partners. Um, does the district hire its own employees? Is there an executive director? Uh, or is it a board that hires somebody else and just says, here's what we want you to do now. Write a new check and we'll do it. 
the, uh, I, I brought this along uh, and I sent uh, some stuff to folks uh, that will be posted hopefully on the uh, thing. It was up uh, last week in Islesboro, Maine. <laughs> And this is the uh, town paper for the month. Um, fascinating. Yes. Huh? That piece was fascinating. Was it? Yes. Uh, so. That the, they um, they did their own fiber. Uh, now they uh, were less limited than we are because they actually used local tax money to uh, get it going. But they also did a pre-subscription within the town of uh, you know. And now there there are perfect model of uh, you know a small town where it has limited um, services right now because they uh, you know everybody wanted them. you know so they they were able to basically have the town council basically say yeah, we'll add a piece onto the tax revenue for the next two years we'll uh, and we'll do you know and so their monthly fee is thirty six dollars a month per subscriber. You know their densities like how many people are these nice? I I, I didn't read the article. Do you know how many people are in town? Uh, something like six hundred and thirty or something. Oh, wow. Over over the winter, which is I mean they serve you know there's the summer is okay. Monheen is doing the same thing right now. And uh, they're so they're delivering uh, you know gigabit service uh, on fiber and they're uh, quite you know. Everybody seems to be ridiculously happy. I mean, I was I was amazed to be sitting out in the middle of nowhere with. <laughs> Dan, was this the one where they worked with the electric company as well? Yes, is, is it, and they had to because they don't have the same. They have different pull attachment rules in Maine as they do in Vermont, so they had to do a lot more work with the electric utility. That uh, he he was envy. I, I was envious of him for being able to use tax money. He was envious of us for the pull attachment. Because they said it took them a lot longer to do the negotiations on the pole attachments. Then, and maybe I mean I was talking to the town clerk in Calus about two weeks ago, and they're suffering from having DSL, and they got a quote from some man or whoever it was going to be hundred thousand dollars to run a fiber line to the town clerk's office. And I said, the heck, we could probably, if they're interested in spending that kind of money, the town might, if they can get an extended subscription rate, you know, for how many years, they might put up. Mm -hmm. So I think it's probably other towns. Right, so and that was something that I was going to mention is, you know, I think the pre-subscriptions are, are probably something we're going to, have, going to have to do in some, some family. And then, yeah, contracting with towns and saying, if you want this, you can hire us as a contractor for it. And that way the town is buying service rather than the town using the tax money to build it for us or something like that. And I think there's, there's another option, too, um, and this might be more, um, more palatable in the, in the larger municipalities is that the towns actually take responsibility and they build their own dark fiber and they lease it to us. Switch to which, which would then allow some version of this to... Uh, right, right. And so if the town decided to bond out, you know, or City of Montpelier decided to bond out $15 million, let's say, and build a whole bunch of dark fiber here, there, and everywhere, and they said, now we want you, or anyone for that matter, to go and, you know, make it happen, run, run the fiber to the premises, from, the, from what's on the existing poles or in their existing conduits or whatever. Um, so, is, is there not a state agency with money to do exactly what you just described? There was. Mm -hmm. It's in mothballs. <laughs> it's not been disbanded. It's not been repealed. It's in mothballs. And EC Fiber used a lot of that, you know, the stuff that they did build, but they were not building in metro metropolitan monitors, not in city areas. They were building in largely in places that they just needed something. That's us, right? So some, some of us. Now, I, I, I have a question on this map. What, what is the service that's providing? Or am I reading this wrong? Is DSL. It? They only have DSL. They only have DSL. They, they had zero coverage of 253, zero cable coverage. OK, I, 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 was, I was reading it backwards. Um, Yes, we we could explore. I'm, I'm thinking that you know because I was just impressed with the fact that they were able to, you know. But I think Jeremy's hybrid there, where the the town could, what and we could do the, shall we say, the engineering and uh, that stuff for them. What he, what he was very clear on, he said, what, what they learned the hard way because they actually set up their own 
they bought a used bucket truck and <laughs> did their own construction. So you had a long conversation with this guy? Oh yeah. Oh great. Oh no, he, 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 he was uh, like, uh, he said, to us, you know, send him any other questions we have, but I said, he gave me a whole package which is being posted on our uh, site, hopefully. And the, um, but he, w he was saying that they have the, uh, you know, the, the company, and it's, a, it's in the package, I don't remember, that did the engineering for them, the contract engineering, said, we had to do over again, we'd have had them do the construction, because they could have actually done it at the same cost as what, 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 what it did for us. We should definitely not get involved So, so um, I was the one who actually suggested that we punt this or send this to this committee um, uh, in my function as alternate. Um, and, and largely, it, it was before we had done that EC Fiber meeting, but it was, predicated, it was predicated on the concept that we should review our options as best as possible um, because they will, in many ways, determine technology, they'll determine finance, they'll determine our approach, right? Um, and after hearing the EC Fiber folks speak, uh, at our meeting, it was abundantly clear that they have many advantages which we do not, right? So they have uh, they have some some gold towns, right? With with high net worth individuals who are willing to write checks up front to, to get things moving. You mean like Waitsfield and more? Uh, Woodstock, Norwich, uh, EC Fiber. Dan is saying is expanded to Waitsfield. Well, yeah, yeah, but I'm, but I'm, but what I'm trying, I guess, what I'm trying to say is that 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 it, that's something that we need to review with clear eyes and and probably do some sort of some form of SWOT analysis around around the advantages that this district has, um, and then formulate an approach based off of of the advantages we do have and the advantages we don't have, rather than saying, oh, this, these guys down south did it this way, so we should do it this way, right? I, I just want to take that as like rote approach. So that was sort of my suggestion, my thinking there. Um, the other piece of it um, that I realized later is that in terms of uh, the finance piece, which I think is actually probably one of the most critical pieces, especially early on, um, is uh, is each different approach to financing, which we'll have to mix and match, has different requirements, has different needs, right? So if we want to engage people in a philanthropic uh, enterprise or engagement, we need to have a mission statement. We have to have uh, an impact statement. We have to have things that help them understand, you know, why they should, out of the kindness of their hearts, give us money, right? Um, uh, and each other phase is sort of a different set of things that we need to check the boxes off and get them done, right? So by doing this SWOT analysis, by developing these sort of like finance options, then we essentially write our action, you know, parts of our action plan as a committee and parts of the action plan as a board, I think. I think another advantage that EC Fiber had is they had some finance wizards, John Roy specifically, they have you know, I don't, not saying we don't have finance wizards, it's just they're not self-evident yet. Uh, who, who knows how to raise and manage money at that, at the tens of millions of dollars of level. Right. But secondly, I'd also caution against a one-size-fits-all approach because the, especially in the early stage, there's, there would be a real advantage to having somebody running with plans right now and tying things together in a paid capacity uh, to get the ball rolling. But right now it would have to be funded from philanthropic money. Uh, whereas down the line it might fit into a Oh yeah, I think I, I think we're all in agreement that it, it has to be a hybrid approach to finance where we're- But also some towns are gonna have, like Callis for instance, if this pilot takes off that I didn't get my chance to propose last meeting, uh, Callis might self-fund their own pilot and turn it over to the district later, you know? Um, that's my idea, not theirs. Um, but the idea that we, different towns, we're, we're wrestling with, are we already too big? Do we need to be bigger? And how would smaller subsets of the district be more at liberty to run faster? And I think we, we, sh we should try to create an environment that encourages uh, what works best and quickest. Does it have to be separate subsets, as it were, but rather uh, does it make more sense to say there are places that would have a deeper desire for something that would be 
uh, done initially, which then begins to prove the concept at a lower cost. Uh, you know, I, that's why I didn't know whether Waitsfield or Warren could be right, but it, places where you could actually get a pre-sale. There's a demand and density. Demand, demand and density, and, and available money. Uh, you know what? Now, what they what they did here was they they had a three hundred and sixty dollar your first year prepay your first pre year. Pre first first year. Pre 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 prepaid your first year. Community supported internet, like a CSA, right? Just like supported internet. Um, which which seems to work very uh, seem to work very well, but they were working in a different. <laughs> but we have many towns that are about that you know not much bigger right. than that. Absolutely, I guess the, the question I have is: is financing is one topic, organizational structure is the other. I mean, there's alternatives. Right. Alternative, I mean, there's alternative organizational structure, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's the EC fire model, and then there's the other one we, we build our organization out of that. But having a discussion on what what we think we may need to have, you know, is it a one-person band, and is it subcontractors that do everything else, or is it, you know, an organization that does its own marketing and sales and customer support, and I don't know, you know, how do we get there, how do you make that decision, you know, yeah. and when do you make that decision? It's important, though, to know what the options are, because there are some things that you'll be able to do, once, once you start going down a path, it can be more difficult to switch to a different structure, you, and you, you probably want to stay with the structure that you've selected. So it would be good to have that well thought out and laid out. And I also think that, and, and I believe you mentioned this, but I'm, I'm going to restate it, that the finance and organizational structure, they, they need to blend, they need to mesh, but I, I think the, the research into that is two separate items. I think perhaps one person can look into organizational structures, another person can look into the finance, and then we blend those after we have the different bits of information. And I assume the objective of what we're trying to do as a committee is to end up with, here's, here's how we think we ought to proceed on each of these elements, and, and here are the options, and you know, we have to make a choice at some point. Right. I'd be cautious against locking in to your, when you suggested you're going to end up making a decision. What if we decide we're going to? Did I say what? What did I say about a decision? Because I think what we're what we're going to get to here is either we're going to have a, a single whatever it is on these topics that we unanimously recommend, or it very well could be a series of alternatives that is presented to the board, and we're not recommending one item. We're not deciding necessarily one item to give to the board. It may be... Yeah, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about years down the road, say two years. Let's say we the board votes to go hire ValueNet, presuming they wanted to take on more, sure. more than they have on their plate. And ValueNet agrees to do it, but two years out, they, they have less capacity, they raise their price, but we don't have another alternative. There's not another contractor with those skill sets and capacity. We end up locked into a monopoly where we might have. But, but, but I mean, that's, that's a problem that any organization is yeah, going to have. So we can't like look down, look two, three years down the road and say, what if, and then be paralyzed into, into inaction. I mean, I think we need to be um, clear headed about, well, if we put all of our eggs in one basket, that right. could happen. Um, so there might be something to be said for, you know, um, keeping all you know, keeping all the employees under the under the umbrella of Central Vermont Pension or whatever it's called, um, <clears throat> rather than going with the contractor. But I think those are just the pros and cons that we have to recognize with each of those decisions. So, as you know, whoever you know goes and takes this as their baby and says organizational structures. Here's the three or four options. One of the bad things about relying on a contractor is that you have to change a contractor. That's awfully painful and may not actually even be an option. It could be much more expensive, I'm sure. But these are just part of the decisions. And, and, sorry to jump right in, but like per your piece, you know, I mean, we might have a very hybridized um, structure as well, right? Where we're, where we are providing a pass through for, you know, backbone uh, internet. And that is a completely different functionality than what ValleyNet would furnish us. And we might do something different 
in that instance, right? So what I'm hearing from you, Stephen, is that you want to make sure that we're adaptable, we're nimble, and we're able to plan, but also to take opportunities and to take challenges as they come. And grow jobs locally. I think the idea of hiring in an out-of-state firm who's going to come in here, hit and run, is not a preferred. Listening for the voice of volunteers. <laughs> Crickets. Crickets. I don't have expertise in, in either of those areas. I, I won't claim expertise, but I will look into organizational structures and do some homework and rely on the expertise of others as I can find it. This meshes with the conversation with the, something I think later on the agenda of identifying possible operating partners. Um, mm. They're they're really in, integral because we'll have a different set of needs if we partnered with Washington Electric Co-op, for instance, because of their skill set. I I I think I I, I understand that. I think it might might. Yeah, that might be. Or, that or if we use that, that together a little bit. Or if we offer to pay to staff up Waitsfield Faston as an operator of CV fiber, because Waitsfield Faston is not going to welcome. In fact, they're going to go so, to the wall to keep so us out of. Point, uh, just a point of order. Can we can we talk about those when we get yes, there? I, sure. I, I think having that discussion is is good, but um, I think. It's out of order. E e even if we even if we decide that we're not going to use that particular organizational structure where we're going to have an operating partner, I think having a list of them in our pocket with that future item is, is the right thing to do. But I, I think yeah. let's let's wait till we get. So you volunteered for the organization. organization. Who organized? Who's doing finance? That's, 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 that's what I'm waiting. For. So, so I mean, what what is it that we need to identify with with finance? I think it. Oh, no, go ahead, please. I think it's it's. Literally, looking back at the EC Fiber piece, seeing what they did, seeing if there are any additional things that we want to, you know, just looking around, seeing if there's anything else we want to consider through other models or even just being creative. All the sources of funding for both yeah. the seed startup grant, yeah. just at this level, and yeah. then sources of funding once we reach a certain level of the six month lapse, bond authority, uh, Etc. Private investment. Okay. So, I, identifying those options. I mean, I do. Do we not have, at least in our minds, a reasonably comprehensive set of options as to what those are? I mean, what's the, what's the question that we're trying to answer by with with this? What I comes mean, to mind is I remember I've attended years worth of C EC Fiber meetings. And it wasn't until they had three years of audited financials that they became eligible to go to Wall Street for junk bonds. So how are we going to do anything during that first three years? But this is something that we've been clear about the, the whole time that, you know, that we will have to establish, you know, clear, you know, uh, clear books for that those years to do that. I mean, that's something that I've known for a while and I've brought up in the meeting several Right, times. but what funding do we use to build those three years of audited financials? I think one thing that might be helpful is to have on a one page or two page or five page or whatever it is the, the vehicles and something about the timing of those vehicles, the, you know, the, the, the monetary extent that they, the, the, the amount of funding we may be able to get from a vehicle, the timing of that, when, you know, where that vehicle fits in the timeline of getting something off the ground, and that would, a lot of that would be about the prerequisites, but what does it take to? How long did it take DC Fiber to get its first money? A couple of years. A couple of years. Yeah. Well, I think some of the founders threw a quarter million in at a piece to start with. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, but from, you know, from conception, when they started sitting down, and then they actually started actually having real, real money in hand, was, I mean, was, that was a few years. I, mean, I, I, I have the slide deck, and I can go back and look at the actual timeline. But. So we need to look at universal service fund, connectivity fund. All of those. And I have the whole list. But the other question I have about the finance thing is, if, 
at what point in the minute, I guess this comes out to some of the other topics, what do we sell and when? You know, what's mm -hmm. the implementation yeah. schedule for delivering? Yeah. Here's the money. We need your money. You well, see something from it. actually, there's, I, I, and this is what I was hearing before and have had a little experience for, but not a financing person. The, uh, the idea is if you structure it somewhere around being a nonprofit where you have a mission and a, a goal, you know, a set of goals and stuff, you are not necessarily tied into the same business plan type of uh, thing where you're basically saying, there is this. <laughs> environment, it's crying for this, here are the reasons why it's, uh, it's needed, and uh, then you go to, you know, and it may be nickel and diming stuff to some degree, but uh, the Vermont Community Fund, the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the other people who, you know, so the, the more we can attach it to strengthening communities, yeah. uh, you know, providing uh, economic development, then we can, uh, uh, you know, open up a whole bunch of areas where now, we are not allowed for local uh, tax money. Are we allowed to have uh, money from state operate, uh, you know, from state funding? State, state funding is fine. You, just, you can't take money from the member towns through their taxing capacity. That's just like, here, we're going to write you a check. Now, like I said before, they could, they could contract. Yeah. Or there's, some, there's other creative things that they Right, but we, we, we need the, the running around money to be able to have those kind of packages. Yeah, right. and, oh, yeah. And, uh, and, and if you have, you know, unrestricted funds, then yeah, I mean, if somebody says, you know, I, I want to make sure you, you get going, and they say, I want, I, I want a tax deductible, you know, here's $500 tax deduction, I want, that's what I want, which they, can, which they can get, giving the money to us. And that's, and you know, unless they're putting encumbrances on it, then we can, then we can work with that. Yeah. Like. yeah, we just need to snowball capital, right? So like, before we can, have a business plan that is, you know, halfway realistic, or you know, have pa paper that it's printed on. <laughs> right? We need a little walk. Oh, 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 paper! Yeah, oh, paper! Walk, 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 walk your own yeah, money. Yeah. Thanks, Elliot, for the agenda so for now. Right? So, so we just need, you know, like uh, some some nice post, you know, like a postcard or a one pager, or, you know, like these materials that we need to be able to achieve those next phases, right? So I think philanthropic funding has a, a lot of advantages in oh, getting that definitely. sort of s snowballing. So um, I would, but the 100,000 is a logical goal number to reach for, right. but it could be struck, that could be structured either as a grant or as a prepayment of the first year service. Yeah, but I think we'd love grants for free. <laughs> no, 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 right now it's a grant. I mean, they, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not in a position to promise a first year service to anybody. Yeah. Especially when we don't know where we're going to start. Right. Um, I like it's not on the agenda, but I like David's question. What are we selling and when? Because that that may could be added to the agenda because that has a whole range of possibilities. We, we can put that for the next meeting. Uh, and I think some of that will be revealed when we hopefully finish our mission discussion for the next yeah. meeting. And and also. I don't mean to point at you, but whoever's going to research financing, that will also inform what are we selling when, right? Like, like we need to have some, we need to have those phases and things like that, so we can say, okay, you know, this is how this this could be structured. You know, this is how we're going to proceed. And somebody's going to have to write a grant proposal. Yeah. <laughs> it's can a town pay for planning services if somebody wants to go and get ahead of the game with their own fiber plan? Sure. I mean, this community block grant money, there's all kinds of things. So we um, really but we, 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 we need a operational entity that would be able to do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean, we also need to go through these sort of you know, mundane details like <coughs> the bank accounts and you know, yeah. signatory power and you know, how do we present the bills, who signs off on the bills, and these sorts of things that are, you know, very well, um, um, well resolved at all the towns and the cities in the area, because they've been doing it for, you know, 100 years. But we're not there yet. I, I mean, it's an iterative process. It's not sure. a purely li linear process. Yeah. We're, we're going back and we're... No, but if somebody it's offered us 100000 right now, seed money, we don't have an account to put it in. Understood. I, I think we would get one pretty quickly. Oh, 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 I, 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 I bet there would be one within 24 hours. Yes, we could. We could figure out a way to do that. So. 
I, I'm sure VSCCU would be more than happy to uh, <laughs> hold it. Hold it in the until we're ready. Yeah, hold it until we're ready. Uh, that, but it, you know, having just been through this with a nonprofit I'm running, that there is a process where you actually have to recognize that the, you've got to have a story to tell. Yeah. And the, uh, you know, sort of, yeah, it's all about the story. You know, now, in each of our towns, by the way, uh, you know, and this requires each of the, like there was the Montpelier Community Foundation, you know, which has some tax money, but it is somewhat separate, you know, so maybe each of the towns has a, 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 either some um, philanthropic entity or a person, you know, so each of the members from different towns mm -hmm. can begin to do some squirreling within their municipality and say, well, actually, you know, Steve down the road here actually has more money than God. And, you know, he, he, he might like the prospect and, you know, in each case it is like identifying the sources because we're not actually talking about identifying the sources. We're sort of still looking at kind of government speak of like we, we have to have this structure and uh, we can't go for the tax money, et cetera, rather than saying, all right, if we have 100000 or $150,000 goal to start with, which is enough to get things off the ground, et cetera, and break it down into what's that going to be used for? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, is it going to be used for staff, for studies, for uh, et cetera? And then you have, so you have a budget, you have your, your narrative, uh, you know, and the narrative is kind of there. I mean, we, you know, we could, mm -hmm. we could squeeze that out fairly quickly. So. so we're getting closer to that, you know, every time we get together. Right. We're, get, we're, getting, we're getting closer. But what I'm not hearing, is the name associated with doing homework on finance. Hmm. Haven't that, heard that. That's a, that, that, that's Got a, a few that's more a minutes. Good, good chair move there. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, Jerry. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think it's me. I, really, I, I have even less expertise in this so, kind of thing. So, so, so listen, we've got, uh, so we've got until 5.55. Can we just, just push this aside for now? No, no, no. Can no. we just like whiteboard this or put this up here and just list, let's literally list what those financing options are and just talk generally about them and then fill in the details Absolutely. The next time. So I, I, I think, we can, I think we can probably do this collaboratively in the next 10 minutes. Let's do it. Because I, I I don't have the time. I mean, yeah, could, could I know this? Yes, I don't have the time outside of this meeting to, to do that. Though. Understood. Understood. So, um, so let's start with just uh, um, yeah, philanthropic donations. So and under that category is okay. Who in Vermont fills that category? Who? United States. I, so I mean, I, I think it needs to be more specific than just film product. Okay. It's like, oh, Vermont Community Fund, the High, High Meadows Fund. Um, there's about, you know, a, a number of organizations in Vermont that do this. By the way, High, High Meadows is a subset of Vermont Community Fund, so. And we still have to go directly to them for the money. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. I'm not sure we fit the category of <laughs> So, so, I mean, under philanthropic donations, there's grants, there's individual giving. There's small dollar donations, there's large dollar donations. Um, you know, there's a couple of other, and even a couple of other options in that mix, right? So, so I mean, if, you know, if we, if we said $100,000 and we wanted to, to, you know, divide it evenly across the towns, which is profoundly unfair for the smaller towns, but we were talking about a little bit less than $7,000 per town. I mean, I think I could knock on doors in Berlin and I could, you know, shake, shake seven thousand dollars out of the trees in not very long. I could do that in a week. I would bet. Tax deductible and donations up to us would be tax deductible. Right, yeah. they are. So, and then there's um, so the the donations. Um, I don't think with uh, with little shoe leather and some time. I don't think that that's terribly difficult. Well, and, the, and, and I, I wouldn't give up the uh, crowdfunding either because the, uh, uh, it, it's a bit of a pain in the ass to set up, but if you've got your narrative uh, mm -hmm. and you uh, use Front Porch Forum and a few other things, you can uh, say, mm -hmm. 
do you want fiber in your future? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's find a way to um, tie our Montpelier access fiber into the state house. If we could feed PBS, PBS just sold our spectrum back for 53 million. Mm -hmm. We could probably tap a piece of that. 53 what is million. PBS? Vermont Public Television. Yeah. Okay. So they, they, that's a huge windfall that they don't know what to do with. So, so yeah, con connecting with partner, uh, especially partner nonprofits, partner municipalities that want to that, that want to see us that, that, um, that want to see us succeed with similar missions. So I'm thinking, so PBS is a clear a clear win. I think Orca is a is a clear win. I think there's other Orca Orca is also with their handout elsewhere. So it's a... sure, sure. But if but if they're on, on board as a as a Partner in terms of getting this out here, that, and if they had you know better access to um, you know faster broadband, were able to move media here and there and everywhere more quickly. Um, I, I was already I was already approached by um, whatever the umbrella organization that goes over Orca and yeah. CBTV. Was that Vermont Access Network? Yeah, they what? love this yeah. and want to be involved in this. Now, is there going to be a lot of money forthcoming? Probably not. But on the other hand, getting getting the word out there is something that they do really well. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, no, that oh, that I'm I completely in agreement with. Uh, you know, it's. Is there any um, telecommunications money grant money? There's a connectivity oh. fund, but there's not a whole lot in it right now. But. But do we? I mean, is it an annual grant cycle or? Is it it's a, an annual grant cycle, and it so can be easily repurposed to. I've been trying to get the legislature to put a focus on planning grants, revolving loan. Fund or planning grants for community. I, I, I talked to ACCD and it looks like we may also be able to get their planning grants as well. Right. Who's ACCD? The Agency for Community Commerce and Commerce Community, and community Development. Right. I just gave out the most recent one. And um, yeah, those, those, those are community, community development, development block grants. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, they have both. They have planning grants and block grants. Yeah, yeah. Plan, it was the planning grant I talked to know about, and that was and those usually require matching funds too. So that's not going to get us all the way there. But um, you can usually use in kind um, contributions to or in kind um, donations of time as part of the matching for some of those. Okay, so I've got foundations, individual giving, large dollar donor, smaller donor, legacy giving, in-kind donations, protect property access, government grants, federal, USDA, FCC, state, ACCD. There may also be some... Um, ACCD has CDBGs for a year or two out. So, do you want me to put that as a sub? Yeah, because the planning grants are different than the community development block grants. Okay, I'll put them both under You got BD... D, D B is reversed in your what, what does that stand for? Community Development, development Block Grants. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, tap into the Universal Fund. So legislative action. Universal and Fund? Universal yeah. Service. It's not managed by the department. It's managed. But uh, yeah, it is managed by the department, but it's it's strictly allocated in a legislative formula. I actually, can I respond to that, even if it's broader than the agenda? I don't. What we're doing here is telecom planning, and the de state has been deficient at telecom planning for a very long time. And to the degree we're going to do the telecom planning for them, part of that job is con convincing the legislature that we can do a better job and we're more deserving of the money that is being squandered by the folks who aren't doing the telecom planning right now. So many state departments are that way. My point is that they're particularly aware and sensitive to this uh, issue right Who's now. Who's aware? The legislature. So is that a lobbying effort? How does that work? Well, the Joint Tech Committee one of my big successes this year was getting the Joint Information Technology Oversight Committee created. They are yet to be appointed, but in their first couple of meetings, they're going to need to be aware of how does what we're doing fit with the statewide goals and the t timeline clicking for fiber speed connections to every home in the state. 
So yeah, we so we can float some you know draft language for yeah. for legislation there too, and I think getting you know getting our fellow board member John Quinn on board and getting him in there and saying that this is a good idea too. Yeah. Um, not that that's in, you know totally within his um, you know realm of responsibility, but I think. I think it makes sense. Do we have a legislative sponsor? I will. I will absolutely write, write that. Where you Shall I get the yeah. <laughs> and, and, and there's and there's plenty of legislators in the you know in, in the county. Um, and, and Anthony Polino would. I've already talked to him about that. Um, Mary Hooper would be. Uh, both, both Mary and Warren would would be willing to. Yeah. Hey, so, I'm, I'm sorry. But... On this financial thing, what else needs to be done besides what we're taking here in minutes? We need somebody championing this, leading this. I don't think so. I think we got to run that set of options by the governing board and let them decide which pursue. I just assume we're going to pursue all of them. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 think, I think we're going to pursue. All I think them it's a good all. good assumption. Um, time, uh, you know, like time. I mean, I think timing. You know, the idea is that we're going to have some sort of plan in place so that we can do this, do this stuff, right? So we can have the materials and the the resources necessary to implement each stage of this financing process. Which we're building towards. Right. Mission statement, you know, yeah. all these things. Yeah. Build. One question, if I may please, and we're running out of time on yeah, this, uh, but there was a gentleman from the board that sent around a notice of grant money that was distributed, I believe it was federal grant money. DC Fiber, I think, got some of that money. Do you know what I'm talking about? It was about? one of the Gilberts. And, and is, is that on this list? Uh, that, that funding opportunity. Who, who put it out? One of our, uh, one of the board members. Yeah, no, but who put, uh, who issued that? It was, it was federal. federal. It was yeah. federal, I don't know if it was I think it's that's upcoming. I think EC Anybody, Fiber got yeah. eligible got for eligible the CAF to fund the reverse yeah, option. Fund to, 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 to. Do you know what that's under? SEC. You can put okay. that up there. Yeah. But that deadline closed yeah. to be qualified. Yeah, there's another year. Yeah. There's, there's year. yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of different government agencies that we should certainly be. I just want to make sure rural on. development yeah. is definitely on our Yeah, rural development is under USDA, that's yeah. why. Right. Yeah, no, I know you got it. So, I mean, you might as well just put Welch and Lee and, and your top <laughs> names on just that list. <laughs> post their pictures? Uh, you know, I don't know. Okay, so we're not gonna we're not gonna have an individual champion this. We're gonna have this in the notes for now, and that's that's and, and a uh, Go a little further, and perhaps in the meeting there is one uh, retired person who has a little more time to who could follow up on uh, become our financing. And so you're saying somebody at the the board uh, at, at, at the board meeting wants to, to own this? Yeah. That would be great. So that's that's an ask. Could you put that up there? Ask for the governing board if anybody wants to own this. <coughs> Yeah, we're looking for a CFO stand-in, interim CFO, to get their head around. So we're, we're, we're spot on time for our next topic, if we're moving forward. Dan, I take that as a let's move forward. <coughs> so there's a, one of the items here is various bank services appropriate for nonprofit use. Um, I don't know who had this particular one in mind. Um, and is that how far afield is that from what we just did? It's more of the where the rubber meets the, the, the road. Yeah. Um, this was uh, Siobhan's suggestion, and I think knowing <clears throat> knowing where our money is going to go and how we hold on to it is probably a sensible thing to have. Whether we need to go and have that have that lined up just now, I'm I'm not so sure. I think we need a checking account. We don't need a investment accounts. Yeah. yeah but we are, I think we want to find a bank that is also supportive of community investment community development. Right, right. And, but there's I mean so, so there's right. different so when you're a municipality there's there's different restrictions on the uh, on how you store your money. Type of accounts. 
So as we get audited, we will, <laughs> we will find out more and more about this, but it's, um, it's not quite as simple as just being to open up, you know, open up an account. You, you, you can't take public money and just, just chuck it in a CD, for example. It has, there has to be some, has to be specific, um, specific insurance structures uh, around that money. Who's got the good experience for this? Um, I've, I, I don't know the details. I would have to talk to our town treasurer to learn more about it. How about Barlow? He works for the League of Cities and Towns. He would know this stuff. Yes, it would, but it would be just as easy to go and walk into VSCCU if that's who we decide to, to choose. And I would, I would hope that we choose them personally. But um, if we walked in there and just talked to their, their corporate banker, whatever, and just said, can we, can we make this work? And if they say no, we go on sand, we'll go and talk to other banks. I, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure they will try and, my experience with them is they will try and figure out how to make it work mm -hmm. you know, in, within the law. I mean, they're not, you know, they're, they're, they're not gonna squeeze anything, but it's a, uh, you know. Who does Berlin bank with? Uh, depends what you're talking about. Depends if you're, you're talking about who holds money, uh, sweep accounts with bonds, or if you're talking about the, the, the general fund. There's a couple different places we have it. The ECCU has not bid on any of our business when we put stuff out there, for example. So that's why it's. I mean, I, I, I know, I'll put it in a pitch, but not for the same since they actually do quite a bit of committee stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. they, they do, I agree. But I like the idea of keeping it local, and both of those are local. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Let's see which one of them will work with. So, is this slightly premature then, as far as making a, you know, moving moving any farther than what we've just done? What, 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 one of the things that, that I, I think that this is probably something that we should do before sooner than later <laughs> is that um, there are people with itchy wallets yeah. and as we get towards the end of the year when people are going to start you know, when you get that big flurry of all of the nonprofits trying to hit you up for funding before the end of the year I think having a bank account ready to go not that we're spending it up not that we're spending you know just some money in the process just a place to put the money to catch end of the calendar year donations all drop of donations tax deductions so then and, and I actually had a, a note on the top here because I want to um, for the end of the year, have a uh, board member shakedown agenda. <laughs> uh, you, no, you pass the hat. I mean, nonprofits always, you know, go to their board members uh, first. This is a difference. We're, we're, this is a difference. We're, we're, we're representing uh, the cities as a, you know, we're, we're, we're not coming as this as a. But, but I'm, I'm going to write a $25 check or five. a $50 check or whatever. But we per can, mile of fiber, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can, so, so zero. Right so zero. Right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, so but we, we can do that. I, I, I think it makes sense to, to have that, and yeah. I think it also, you know, the the fact that we can go out there and say that we're handling money is, I think, probably it's a, it's a good solid first step. So we've got to talk to these two guys. I, I I would yeah. say, I would also just say somebody points, you know. I don't want to make overcomplicate things, and I don't think anybody does. But somebody did say, "Well, does it? Shouldn't this go to a finance committee?" And I we would, don't have one. and I would like what's that? We don't have one yet. Well, I know we don't have one, but but we should probably, you know, have one. Have a treasurer, treasurer who presides over that committee, That's true. and they should be separate. You know, one's focused on raising money, the other's focused on, you know, being compliant and spending it right. So. I mean, that, I think that's a perfectly acceptable thing for us to come back and be like, you know, talk about it. We think the finance can, you know, we need a finance. We need a finance. Committee. Well, how about if that we make that as a recommendation yeah. to the board at the next board meeting? Yeah, we need a good. finance committee and the treasurer. Yeah, so let's let's do that. We and uh, in the meantime, I will disagreement on that. No, no. I will ask those two banks what their paperwork requirements are and what the account fees and interest would be for a municipal checking account. So, um, the tre um, while we're thinking about treasures and such, this is something that we'll even talk about at the, at the board meeting too, but um, the treasurer can't be a member of the guard board. That's a statute. Uh, really? Really? That's the way it is with the fire department, isn't it? Treasurer, treasurer is not a 
treasurer, treasurer was it, is an ex officio member of the board, but could conceivably be on the board. Could. But I think you, I think we want someone with much more finance experience and credit credentials. Right. But if we if we have somebody with finance experience, do we want them as the treasurer or do we want them as the fundraiser? So, but 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 that's that, that's a good point. Maybe we want them as both because we may want to pay the fundraiser, and we almost certainly want to pay the treasurer. Tre now, treasurers are nonprofits. Don't you know? A, a, a small city are not necessarily paid, but the and fundraisers have to be very careful of because there's a point at which they have to register with the state, and there, there there's a whole bunch of paperwork that goes along with that. Why, why are we paying anybody? <laughs> so, <laughs> hold my pockets here. So, um, so I'm, you're sitting next to Jeremy. He's going to already hit you up. So I, I, I will. He already has. I already did. did. <laughs> yeah. I just, yeah, I saw. Um, anyways, the um, because I, I'm imagining somebody who's like a municipal treasurer, maybe they want to do this pro bono initially, but maybe we, you know, ask them to do this as, you know, in their professional capacity too. But I wouldn't. I, I, I don't know that you want to take somebody who's a professional and ask them to do it for free. Maybe we can find somebody. Maybe, I, I guess I, I I misspoke. At this point, okay. At this point, I think it's everybody's working pro bono. Okay. At this point, at some at some point when this is you know gets closer to being an operating and, sure. it, and it's okay. and it's you know not six we're, hours we're, long. For we're, yeah, we're just trying to get this warm at the moment. Yeah. Okay, but I, I I agree with you. At some point, the people that are doing the work will need to get paid at, okay. at some point. Fair enough. I mean, the, the thing about this uh, Islesboro group, because they were working with tax money, the, the, the town treasurer was actually the, and was also the, 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 the treasurer for the internet. But he did it during his business hours. Yeah. He didn't, it wasn't separate from well, because it was a town project. It's right, a town right, project. Right, right. right. So yeah, it wasn't in addition. addition. When you, and building on that, there are a bunch of towns that have part time treasurers. Mm -hmm. It might be the key kind of person. Oh, they, Oh, hey, Coventry's got a really. <laughs> I know. Just as long as it bonded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm still trying to wrap my head around how in kind services work, but in, in theory, they could give their services as an in kind contribution to the organization, take it as a tax deduction. That's, so that's we need to shake the bushes and figure out who, who are the finance wizards in the yeah. crew and who's yeah. willing to devote some time for this. Yeah. Who was in yeah. private equity? Come on. Let's... Okay. Moving on. Any endless? Hold so doesn't have a brand up apostrophe in it. Our uh, hmm? holds Berlin's account. So we're we're, we're 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 pretty much done with the various bank services. We're going to make a recommendation to the governing board, and we're going to move forward with what we have in the notes as far as as far as that goes. So the next one is the. Uh, and we had started talking about it under organizational structures, and that was identifying a short list of potential operating partners. Um, there, there, there's, there's, I think that, and as I had mentioned before, but without wanting to go too far afield, I think that falls kind of closely with organizational, there's a lot of overlap on those Venn diagrams. So. Um, I don't know if it's if it's a s totally separate effort or if it's close enough to be the same part of the same effort. I, I still think that having having this list is going to be useful. Oh yes. E even, even if we even if we end, end up hiring our employees directly rather than having an operating partner. Well, I, I think you're right. I think I think this is part of yeah, the due diligence. And when you think of operating partners, like EC5 is operating partner value net, yeah. is that the kind of person from firm you're looking for or organization? Okay, yeah. <coughs> so. At the risk of tyranny, I, I'm, I'll throw out five that I can think of. Go for it. Some of them, not in today's world, but in a possible future scenario, VTEL could be an operating partner. Stowe Cable, I recently talked to the operating partner, the manager there. They've been building great guns under the guidance of Tim Nolte. They have a state-of-the-art network 
and they could potentially hire more people and operate a bigger service area. They're right next to Elmore. Ballynet, I don't think they're looking to take on new work. Waitsfield Faceman, Greg Haskins, they have a huge service area already, but they do have the trucks and tools and technicians to actually be an operating partner. What's the second word to that? Waitsfield? Waitsfield Faceton Telephone Company. Faceton? Yeah. F A Y S T O N. There is this town that doesn't seem to have a center that's up on the hillside okay. above uh, uh, Waitsfield. <laughs> it's also you... called Champlain Valley Telephone. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And Washington Electric. Yeah, uh, uh, Washington Electric. They're not there yet, and they may never be, but they can't uh, not be considered. So that's Washington Electric Co-op, I guess. Yes. Right? yes. Sure. I mean, one of the things I was wondering is, for, for Washington Electric, for example, is there potentially not a benefit, a service they could use oh, yeah. by having all of their oh, yeah. meters yeah. that accessible? I mean, you would think that that's, that's something that... They're willing to help. And and, and GM, make GM, GMP would be uh, uh, equally yeah. interested. Yeah. Yes, I think so. GMP said they're not interested. Washington Electric has said they're not interested, but then Washington Electric is coming around to saying, if our members get a discount, maybe we'll be more I think that, I mean, we're talking about organizations that have systems already set up, established mm -hmm. for right. billing, you know, all that Trucks, truck. bucket trucks, well, linemen, pole cars. Yeah. Uh, Transvideo. Transvideo and Northfield. Mm -hmm. And what uh, do they do? They're both cable companies like Stowe. Okay. Yeah, and then they, what about the one that's running the services in, um, I want to say, over in, on the river side of things by Bradford? Is it? Topsom Telephone? Topsom Telephone. Not that they want to do it, but I mean, they're another entity that's in the business. And then I would, I mean, I don't know what Mike Michael's future is, but is he an operating entity or not? Birnbaum? Yeah. He is, but he's got his plate very clean. I know. I mean, is he going to say, I don't know, I'm willing to grow my company. Kingdom Fiber. Or what's uh, Cloud Alliance? <laughs> Cloud Alliance. <laughs> Kingdom Fiber, Cloud Alliance, two different organizations? Yes. <laughs> so they're one person. Ah, okay. um, um, who else is out there? RG? Or R R R B rather. R B and East Montpelier. Oh. Uh, yeah. That's bad. Not that's bad. Ruben. 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 It's fine as well. TBS Telecom, I don't think wants. They're, they're barely hanging on to Northfield. Did you just say TBS? TBS. I mean, they, they're just a little telecom operator, but they do have trucks. Well, and they're, they're a little here. They're, they're, yeah. they're bigger elsewhere. Yeah. So if you want to consider all the options, they let's, are an option. Let's just, let's put that may be what yeah. you know. And they have an office in Northfield. Yeah. Oh, what was that name? TTS? TTS. I think we should put as many people on this list as we possibly yeah. can. Because yeah. we might actually have a, some sort of patchwork. You never know. Yeah. Right. Then um, Otelco. Which one's that? Otelco. Which is what Otelco. It's a... They, they run Shoreham, they bought Shoreham. Okay, so all the, okay. Yeah. But they're building fiber, they're owned, at, they're managed out of Maine, but these are companies that have experience running and building networks, but they have a marginal footprint in Vermont, but this might be what makes the difference that makes them stable and. But um, itself goes for profit though. It is. Yeah. yeah. As is TDS. Sure. Yeah. As is. We're talking about a subcontracted arrangement with the service. Um, and, and, and look at the. I, 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 again, I don't. Yeah, I can go. But the stuff I sent. The, he he had nothing but good things to say about this company out of Connecticut that they. Yeah. What? It's an name of it. It's, 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 it's not an it's, it's 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 in, it's in well, well, but they. Uh, they said, yeah, they, uh, they came and did the engineering and we were going to do the construction, so we did, but if, we had, uh, if I had it to do over again, I'd have them do the construction as well. Tilson? Tilson, T-I-L-S-O-N. They're, they, they're out of Maine. They're running networks. They're designing and building networks. They're, they employed the guy who left VTA, the director of the VTA, now works for Tilson. Chris Campbell. Oh. 
So a couple um, mm -hmm. other options that are um, maybe a little bit farther out there. Less as an operating partner, more maybe as a, as a co-location partner would be some, something like Goddard. They do have some IT staff, but they're rather small. And then probably more appropriately, uh, Norwich University, my employer. Um, lots of IT staff. They don't have bucket trucks, but they have a lot of um, skilled people there. Is it, because what about VTC? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean that's a that's a state entity, and I don't know how easily they're going to be able to move or how quickly they're going to be able to move an opportunity like that. I mean that we might as well be, in that case we might as well partner with the state, which is possible too. Yeah. I mean the well, <laughs> I mean the mayor Barry, after all, is very supportive of this and is a state employee doing networking stuff. The state doesn't know how to be a good partner right now. Okay, but, right but, but, but we're make, making the list. Yeah. Velcro. So Checking it twice. Velcro. Sure. Mm -hmm. Which does not have to make yet. <laughs> but they have the trunking. Um, no, they have a top-notch yeah. team of certified security cleared network operators running. Yeah. The, you know. So here, um, or, you know, do we want to ask a town or a city to be the operator? There's IT staff in some places, and maybe one of them wants to take this on in terms of getting things running. I think it's wrong. I, I don't think we got anybody big enough. <laughs> I mean, we, you could, it's, if we're being exhaustive, Shares Communications it just bought BT. That's just saying, BT. Wrong to talk about. Why not? Just on the road. Just on the road. <laughs> just, just thought I had to start, which is five. <laughs> <laughs> and then we continued. And then we, can, then we persisted. All right. Nice. So uh, identify a short list. I think we failed. We did it. Yeah. We did it. No, we covered it. This, this is the short list. This is yeah, the short list. It's a long this list. list. This is the list to start. That's great. Uh, maybe it's best to move on to uh, CBI talking points because that might take a little time. I think the intention of this was to have something like the uh, elevator speech in your in your pocket. Is that what this was meant to be? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I and I think this is this is valuable. I got a call from somebody there in I don't even remember where they were, Burlington or out of state or something. Like that. They they called me and they said we're thinking of moving to Northfield. You know, and, and, and we were hoping that we could get our internet service through Central Vermont Internet, and I was like, <laughs> and, and they said something about this other ISP told them that they should call me. There you go. Oh, wow. Now you, now you, now you're oh, they, 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 so they, they, they're throwing grit in your ears. Are you in my voting <laughs> district? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and they were looking at buying a house, and they said, here's the address, and I, I knew from the map. I said, oh. you, got, you got DSL, you probably have two meg tops there. And they said, and so when are you going to build there? <laughs> yeah, that's in that plan. And there's some other potential partners, the Realtors Association. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's true. But actually, I think this, fits, some money, guys. Yeah. this fits into talking points because we have opportunities to deliver services before we build stuff by leasing dark fiber and turning it up in certain areas and this this weaves into a conversation i hope to have at the next board meeting about microcells and about public safety but to the degree we can start leasing a dark fiber circuit and lighting something up there's nothing that keeps us from putting service into an area using you, have to pay for that? you do have to pay yeah, for that. <laughs> So you have money to pay for it. So the other thing that I think, you know, an elevator pitch is great for raising money, but there's also the where we are, who we are, yeah. right? And and I think you just really get to the crux of it, which is right now, even people are uncertain as to, you know, what we're doing and how we're doing it. And and it, and it's okay for us just to have talking points that are pretty much like, you know, we are we are a nascent 
a communications district that is working on building out, essentially planning yeah. a, a, a regional uh, network that will deliver broadband to residents of central Vermont. You know, to that, everybody. that, what's that? To everybody, not to, just residents. To central Vermont. To central Vermont, yeah. sure. Uh, residents is, is our, our okay. nonprofit preferred way of not calling people citizens because that is oh, residents with a T that uh, excludes uh, not a CE okay thank you anyway um, so um, I, I did create the Q&A before town meeting mm -hmm. which I think covers some of these higher level talking points um, and so some of the talking points would, would include like what is CVI some people might think that oh it's just another for profit that's coming in here to do this so saying that it's, it's a you know, intending to be this publicly owned entity, whatever else it ends up being, according to the mission statement. Locally owned, locally governed. Locally owned, locally governed, yeah. Or, yeah, public, pub, publicly owned. Public, non, is, public, is it non profit? Public, publicly owned. Is, that, is it non profit? It, it must be non profit. Okay. Uh, so it's not, the, there's three talking points right there. So locally it's, owned, it's, locally it's, governed, it's, non profit. Not, it's not non profit. It's not for profit. It is not for profit. It is a municipality. Municipality are prohibited from being. Yeah, policy. I th I think in my language I intentionally danced around how we were incorporated. <laughs> well, you could call it a super right. municipality because it's a municipality. I, I, I just call it publicly owned. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because when you get into this super municipality or yeah, the other, it the, 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 nobody, nobody, nobody has any idea what you're doing. Yeah, about. we have to avoid jargon in our talking points. Absolutely. So. I, yeah, I mean, not for whatever. Yeah. How about fiber, fiber optic based? Uh, and that's and that's something that, that I have in a, in a later one. Yeah. It's like what what is that actually? What is what are we actually doing? I think we're going to lease and build and manage or arrange to manage a hybrid fiber network across the whole service area. You know what people were more concerned about than knowing about the individual details about um, whether we're buying or leasing or building this or whatever? This could affect my taxes. That, well, that, that, that was part two. Uh, part, part one was, are you using the existing poles or are you using wireless? No, no, oh, so okay. seriously. What you mean? So, yeah. so well, well, wireless is one thing, but existing poles or is this something we're going to have to dig up the roads? And easy enough to run things along the poles. And people have a, a clear understanding of what that looks like. It's nice, tangible um, instruction. The reason we have, we have no scenic views of Vermont anymore is because we have everything covered in wires. Well, but where as, we're as, gonna, a, as a photographer. It's a ledge this far under your, your soil. Where so. we're going to cross so bridges, we're going to have to go in conduit. So, you know. So, so usually the way that I write talking points is I actually do start with questions. I find that to be a helpful way of mm -hmm. creating the talking point. You know, yeah, the question is a good way. To yeah. Um, you know, so. You know, like who are you? Is is a, you know mm -hmm. who are you? What do you do? And then thinking of some of the more frequently asked questions and and pulling together. Is it going to raise my taxes? Is it going to raise my taxes? <laughs> yeah, taxes. Did you email poll it? usage. I was it's, it's it's in the folder. I mean, this is something that I gave to right, yeah, to right. right. town back in yeah. March. Yeah. Because so, so we dress this up. So yeah. So what is this? Why do we need this? How much will my taxes go up? Who owns the infrastructure and takes on the debt? And can this actually work? Is Vermont dense enough? How much does it cost? How fast is it? Will CBI respect net neutrality and user privacy? Right. Uh, it, it seems like you've done a whole bunch of stuff on the front without uh, talking about what it is until down at the bottom. Um, you know, what, 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 what are we providing? Mm -hmm. and, and also a lot of those, and, you know how fast. Well, well, some of like, fiber speed the, internet. The, the first question was, "What is this?" My answer was, "You just said we can't use internet." About a dozen towns in central Vermont are building a community-owned internet service provider to provide up to gigabit speeds. Hmm. That was my answer. But so we can go to ten gig. And we're not we're not building. It's it's a, actually it's, it's a gigabit. We're, and we're not building. Why? Are we? 
Well, because we're, we have no money. We're, we're, we're building the planning to build. We are, we are I planning. I didn't say we were building the network. I said we were building the provider as to why we're doing, yeah. why we had this question yeah. on the town meeting about. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just flagging that, that, that we don't want to, we want to, as much as possible, avoid confusing people by making them think that this is coming to their house tomorrow. Right. We also so, don't want to tell them it's sixty-five dollars a month. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 So, can I have internet now? That's the question, right? Okay. So. High, high speed. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think there's some things that we can definitely, you know, like net neutrality. I think that's something. We like people don't we, know what it means. Yeah, that could, that confuses. Half no, half <laughs> of the doors that I knocked on. <laughs> I kid you not. Half the doors that I knocked on in Northfield asked. Really? So if, you, if you're telling me that nobody knows or nobody cares about that, you are wrong. Those were yeah, yeah. those were the Russian bots that submitted <laughs> yeah, comments. Yeah. As you know, yeah. Russian bots yeah. the board. <laughs> no, this was this was one of the most frequently asked questions <laughs> aside from price about when as I was knocking on doors. People people are in the know. This was far more common. I, I submitted a comment on net neutrality and I was like looking for it oh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the FCC and I was like, okay, I'm in Barry City. I'll look at Barry City list. It's probably like me. And I look and there's like a hundred thousand comments from Barry City, but they're not written. You know, they're they're I'm, I'm they're Russian like, bots. They're Russian Russia. bots. So um, that's a joke. anyway, okay, um, cool. I think. Yeah. I How mean, far do we want to go with this? Because can we get what you have on the screen? Because I, I feel like there's a so uh, there's yeah. a real cut and paste thing that we could be doing. So we're we'll happy to uh, it's in uh, January. Just scroll yeah, down. January. So say to 2018. Oh, it's I I sorry I have mine ordered by. Oh, yeah. I have it by last modified. I could do it. By no, just just scroll up. You you must have not passed it. I passed it. There's November. Oh, I must have uploaded that. Um, so, so, so. We need folders. Back down. Yeah, back down a little bit. It's on the list. It's on the list. It's on the list. <laughs> this. Um, oh, okay. So there's there's another one that's not sideways. It's called something very much like. Is, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it text or PDF? Is it called not sideways? It's PDF. No, open it in PDF. Yeah. Open, okay. And, All right. And, uh, turn it. How many techies does it take to open the PGM? Right, I'm just All right. <laughs> uh, okay, what is it? What is this? What is, what, is it supposed to be folded? Is that the idea? I, I, I cut it. Okay. <laughs> I was, yeah. There's two columns. What's going on? All right, do you want to need me to, to the old and infirm need me to zoom in? Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> uh, See attached. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think a, a key issue we're going to hit real quick is how does this, what are you doing different than Comcast or Sovereign Ed? That's a good question. Yeah, the distinction. What distinguishes this from a current provider? Well, the speed of the internet and all you can do with it. Well, this will be symmetric, presumably, which Comcast will not be. Yeah. And this, and that's, you know, at some point we're going to have that. What, what does that mean for the average user? But nobody's, 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 bring, nobody's bringing, Comcast isn't knocking on my door asking me if I want an upgraded service. You don't get five million. They just turned on gigabit upgrade across the whole Vermont city service city territory. I, I take a ship with. I I, well, I I don't want to sidetrack. No, I get nothing. They're 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 offering and marketing oh a new gigabit service to upgrade you for to eighty nine dollars a month. They've not offered that to me because they don't have any wires. Yeah, oh, like, okay. so they know it to me. They know where they're sending it. Yeah. yeah. They're not bringing it to me because I wouldn't want them if they were bringing it to me. Uh, that's cool. Um. You, you need a, they'll swap your modem and. <laughs> These are fine. Yeah. Do we. These, yeah, these are fine. I think we outlined some potential additions. Yeah. Uh, 
I want to take that speech. 17 megabit speed out of there. Just, I mean, if you, but if you read what it said, we don't know for sure, but hope to get near EC Fiber's monthly rates and then explaining. I think we should leapfrog. Yeah. EC Fiber was short sighted to trickle 17 when they should be giving everybody gigabit like VTEL is doing. Yeah. You know, it's we should be just start at a gigabit internet. That was a marketing technique that they chose. And we haven't decided to use that yet. So their average their average revenue per subscriber is a hundred dollars. So the number of people actually buying sixty six dollar packages is low. Has the board voted on net neutrality? Okay. So we gotta do a few things. While we all are amenable to it, you know, that it would be less of like this, it would mm -hmm. probably be more like, uh, you know, that's pending, you know, and then as a board, this is where you come in as a board chair and you yeah. can, you can set, you can deliver the temperature of the room right. with it, our approval, is, I think. Is this part of a mission statement? Net neutrality? Yeah, I think it's part Operating of a mission statement. Yeah. yeah. So it's coming pretty quickly, but I just want to, yeah. I mean, like, I'm no, swagging it as like, Absolutely. like, you know, I think. Okay. Um, I can throw the original word. <clears throat> yeah, that very helped me out. Great. And so if we just want to, I don't know, um, what, what's the deal with open meeting laws and ed group editing things in like Google Docs? Is that legal? No. You're a par parliamentarian. No, I'm not. I don't you know. But no, you can't? Not even if you have like the... Can't, can't, collaborate, can't collaboratively do something like that with mm -hmm. a quorum that are able to right. do it, to be part of it. Got it. Now, could you create a copy? Yeah. Create a Google Doc and share it with me? Yeah. Could we do it back and forth? Absolutely. Can you do that in such a way that the rest of the board can see it? No. Okay. Great. So, I'm putting out, let me put that. Um, do, we, do we want to, I mean, I, it seems like you have a very robust uh, set of talking points, I think we added a couple. Do we want to sort of agree on an ad hoc basis that we, we can... I think we got to pare them down. I think we need to get down yeah. to like yeah. 10 things that everybody can remember and pitch them That's regularly. Which has been proven that people can't remember. Yeah, we need three. three. We, need, we, need our, we need our top line message and then we need three supporting talking points for them. Right. Yeah. Um, 2793. <laughs> I agree with that. I just, I just think that you know, like rather than assign one person, this is something that people could probably just like go in and say, send a red line copy to Jeremy, and we can let Jeremy coalesce them all together into yeah, I'll take, yeah, one right. sort of thing. And so I, I, I did put the original word document in there. If anybody decides they want to go, so we can, we can each individually send a red line copy to Jeremy. That's okay. We're not yes. going to get emails saying no. we can't do that. No, no, that's. I'm, I'm that. not the electronic. It's no, that's that's totally legal. Just okay. like, just like you can one on one call, you know, select board members can one on one call, call and say, hey, try to find where the that. line is. Yeah, yeah. No, okay, that should be fine. Yeah. The red line. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't. I did not mean to do that. Okay. So I'll do my best to incorporate everybody's feedback, but knowing, of course, that uh, there are going to be conflicts. You're just going to take mine. I mean, yeah, you know, that's just that's just the way that's going to work. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we're all sending our red line copies to Elliot, who will then send his <laughs> copy. It's done to me. Uh, I, I mean, if, if, you, if you want me to do that, I'm fine doing it. I'm a, okay, I'm a professional writer, so. Let's see, dodging that before the show. John? Okay, so. Uh, uh, RFP for yeah. local service providers, I think we, we're not right there yet. Almost. Almost. Four, four, six, 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 six. I haven't been home since Sunday. Uh, yeah. The. Uh, I think what he was saying was, 
in terms of that as an agenda item, we may, may not be there, there yet for this. Yeah, we could skip it is what I'm saying on this. Yeah, we come all for that. And then, so if we do skip that and we go to market plan, there's the document that you had yeah. provided, which maybe can get a, a reasonable amount of time. So and, and we're skipping the RFP set, right? Yes, yep. yes, we, we're just tabling that for this for now. I don't know, I get carried away, I guess, when I wrote, when I wrote. Um, or you should be carried away. I should be carried away. It was sort of the planner in the end. And I was just thinking of all the different things you need to do, the organization needs to do in terms of getting to go. And even though the task was market planning, I, I think, you know, who are we in terms of both, you know, the mission statement and the, and the, the whatever we're doing business as is a very important thing, as well as branding. What is the freaking brand? You know, what, what's the logo? What's the, what's the subcontext of, you know, what's the subtitle of who, who we are? You know, the, I don't know, VC Fiber has a sub, subtext. So, no. No. And I Based on their logo, no. <laughs> Sorry, that's good. Yeah, so that, that, those are all things that I think are important to this. But in terms of, you know, the data gathering, um, which is my, my field, um, I just want to say that, that you know, the, before I, I mean, this, I put this out there for people to add to mm -hmm. or, you know. Subtract from? Subtract from. <laughs> um, he has his pilot project idea. We're going to run without any basis of who we are. But I, <laughs> I think we need to be a little more organized about where we're going and how we're getting there. And it's, it's almost too bad that the that the uh, the open meetings laws prevent us from, from working with some of the more modern collaborative tools like you know, project management tools because I'm imagining putting this up on some sort of like document repository and like assigning this to me and I just fill in the blanks and timelines and all that you know what, what's the history of all this we're going to in that this. in that vein I suggest the last time we're going to want to keep a running list of proposed legislative changes, and that would be a logical one. They would yeah. welcome the idea of oh, updating right. open meeting law to yeah. accommodate collaborative online tools. Yeah. So the other, before I you know, spend a lot of time on this, one of the, the, the survey of potential customers, we've been, and my, my former company, or my current company, even though I'm retired, has been doing, um, a, there's a tool out there called Survey123, which allows you to create unlimited questions you want to ask somebody and, and I'm thinking that it would be great if we put together a list of what we'd like to find out about our client, the town, you know, towns and businesses and whatever. And one of the easiest ways to do this in terms of helping us identify locational stuff is using the E911 eSites database is the primary. You know, I have no names, so I can use that as the database of the survey information is collected on and allowed and the concept I have is using front porch forum. So here's the URL for the survey on Central Vermont's fiber, whatever. And we're not going to get everybody, but we're going to get a, a, a good smattering, and so including, yeah, I'm interested in participating at this level of speed, service, money, I'm financing, I'm going to I'm willing to put up some money up front, I'm you know I'm going to give you money if you want. So that's the kind of concept I'm thinking that we so you have easily do. So you have each of us, uh, so because I have the uh, front porch forum in Montpelier, I would you post I, we post, I post it there. As the, as the member. Uh, uh, and and the, doing the and doing the little mission thing, you know. Stick. Well, no, we, yeah. we got we, you know what what are we what are we hoping to do? Uh, and we want your feedback. We need so your that, feedback, and then you and, fill out the survey. And and, and, and it turns out. With them, if you space a couple of days in between, you can do it like three times before they whack you. For you. The, time, um, the question I have is, do you, do you want anybody replying to a survey with their name or not? Because it could be pretty anonymous by the... I think the town would be sufficient. But... Well, we have the E91, it's going to an E91 address. When they fill in this survey, the results are tagged to the 911 address. How are you getting that? Through their IP? Hmm? Through their IP? No, from the, the, the database we've been building from the survey is attached to the 911 
I, you know, I, I don't think we, you know, first of all, because of all the sensitivity around names and uh, data right now, the uh, merely having them do it because we're still a ways away from the market. We can go back and do this again. When, when we want. Uh, I think I, we don't want to create a privacy hack. Uh, right. Anon, I, I think anonymized data is probably sufficient even, uh, and with and detached from addresses, so that we could Boy. so that we would only have sort of generalized things like what is their current service level, maybe their di the distance that they are away from something. They, pro they probably won't know, you know, what, what, what can we get that we, they probably Well, I can tell you why the 911, I mean, if you're looking at density analysis feature to figure out where you're gonna deploy first, knowing where this information came from is, mm -hmm. is useful. Okay, oh, are you? But it's highly competitively sensitive because Comcast or Fairpoint's gonna wanna Hack this data set and get out there before we do. But they can't provide the same service we're providing, so does it matter? Or they refused. <laughs> well, wait a minute. I, uh, I, I'm a little unclear, Stephen. How are they going to hack it? They're going to ask for a copy. They're going to ask for a copy. They want a survey. They want a copy of our survey results. Oh, and because we are a municipality, we have to provide yeah. it. Mm -hmm. and, but do we care? I mean, at our, you know, well, no, you, you're, you're getting into an area that the Policy Development Committee has been charged with looking at because EC Fiber has run right up against the issue of are our computer mapping files competitively sensitive, but Fairpoint is using the information of where you apply to attach to a poll to run ahead of you and, and sign people up for DSL before you can get your fiber lit. So, but you're not going to stop that. And I mean, they're the only way to that anyway. And, and I already have a poll, and nobody's offering me broadband. So it's it's it, the, the the information that you're talking about, the the, the e nine one one, that's available. These guys, yeah. the the companies that have tens they of millions could be of doing dollars, this themselves, they've never already, done. Or they already have done it in yeah. a, in a certain way, and they made the business decision to not connect. But, I mean, they've done that. They've they've already made their business decision. And. And I, I will say, I mean, I was talking to, um, I was talking to an attorney and asking them about this particular piece, and and they're they were they're very knowledgeable in public records, and they worked for the state for twenty five years. They were confident that uh, there there is we there are carve outs for proprietary business related data, so. But I don't know. Municipalities like aren't usually in the process. In the role of being in business. Yeah, it's well. it's not up to me to to, to make that, that determination. That. No, those exemptions are easy to find in the book. The question is when the courts have sometimes ruled that municipalities aren't in business. Mm -hmm. But we are. We are a municipality in business. We are very well, different. So communications union districts and uh, ready. Um, ready districts are different than towns. And what's a water district? I mean, water district sends out bills to residents. So I want to know how much water you're using. Can I get that data from a water district? That's a municipal thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, absolutely. So sure you can. But the water districts are not competitive. They're provided with their They're monopoly. They're monopoly. They're yeah. monopoly. We are not a okay. we are competitive but public entity. This area has not been tested or interpreted in law yet. Actually, that's different in different parts of the country. There are, been, yes. there are private <laughs> entities that buy the municipal water, water systems. And, yeah, and, there, there's, and, and, and there are public ISPs in other parts of the country. Bring us back to it. Yeah. <laughs> we should, I, I mean, I was going to joke and say we should definitely make sure we have a big bank account yep. before we do it so that when we have to go to court, we, we can pay a lawyer. Um, but I was also thinking probably in terms of fundraising, we would probably pull in tons of money from throughout the United States if we were to engage in such a battle with a Comcast, right? Yeah, that would be a problem. Uh, Fair well, that would be a lot of money. Money. <laughs> So there's a, there's a give and take there. Um, I, I, I like the survey idea, and I, like, yeah. I, I think I'd like that as long as we can sort of um, get past the privacy issues. And I, I, I think that could also be a nice initial place for funding. And I, I think having... Um, Obviously, you have to collect people's names so that you can get get, get the money from them. But um, doing that, getting that data, doing that analysis in a privacy-sensitive way, 
I think it's totally doable, and I think we should probably do it sooner than later. We almost have to warn them, though, that if this gets tested and we lose, we violated their privacy. Yeah, of course, and I mean yeah. that's just like when, when I when I send emails to constituents in Berlin, I have a little little footer that says Re responses to this are subject to public records. Well, no, we could say we, we intend to claim and defend the the competitive exemption. Sure. sure. But if we lose, we're going to have to give up your name and address. Yeah. Well, you, no, but wait a minute. The, the 911 gives you address but not name? What? Right. So, so, so what, 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 what if we just did something like this? What if we just said we put together a survey not tied to E911? We can do that. I mean, that's not a problem at all. And just say, um, and maybe ask them to give their street name. And that way, so we the other beauty of the 911 data, I, I have to explain this. For every 911 data ID, this, the building itself, there's a road segment that it goes with. So you can actually collect density of you know, mm -hmm. how many structures there are per road segment. Oh, well, that would be but, very. But if, but if we can sort of, so we get some fuzziness with protection of privacy. Yeah. I think I, well, we just don't ask the name that name. Does, but sir, we do. We does, do know where the, the, the cable wires are. So no, we don't. <laughs> I thought we know where the cable. Yeah, we have we have a reasonably good idea of, of, what, of what's covered and what's not. Right, right. So it, it gets a little fuzzy. It doesn't get you. You, you lose definition. But but so, right. so, so for example, if we look at if, if I said Brookfield Road, Berlin, you're going to be able to tell me that there's a stretch of you know one residence. There's exactly one residence, <laughs> three structures, two structures. <laughs> Three structures on Brookfield Road in Berlin that are covered by Comcast. Isn't that Black Street? Or Black Road. Uh, Black actually, Street? what? No. You can't. That is not a publicly available data set. That cable line is not public. The, ca the, the ca Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we won't go there. Even the news. This turns into. So um, maybe sooner than later, just so we have an idea of demand and what we're dealing with, and also to get a, a sense of possible donors. I think putting together sure Wait, guys, by, by just having an idea of sure. what's, what's the uh, demand level we can pursue, at, you know, at what level of service, yes. because, uh, you know, it, 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 what, what do we, where do we drop off uh, in terms of cost as yeah. far as demand? Does, does, we, yeah. does survey one, two, three cost money? Sorry. Not much. Okay. Yeah. But we could also use, we could also create a Google form. Yeah, uh, the reason I like the survey is a GIS based system. You have the information going forward. There, there is a lot to be set for that. So, yeah. How about front porch form? Have you used them for things like this? Oh, yeah. Yes. I use, yeah. All the uh, uh, So I'm thinking front porch form would be the link over to his survey, yeah. and that would yeah. then capture the location. But, but that's okay with front porch form. Oh, sure. Sure. Can we kick that to the other committee to just review the privacy implications? Of sure. I think I think the privacy implications are a much larger discussion here. I think if we just have a as generalized of a questionnaire as we can, if, so if we get you know 80 respondents in Montpelier mm -hmm. and they say, yeah, we're willing to pay $200 for a gigabit fiber, then... I don't think... I don't think the survey is that urgent. We got yeah, other well. stuff to do that's more important before we get to everyone informed enough. Well, we're trying to find money. It's the important. I think, I think we can go, <laughs> these things can go parallel. I don't know. Yeah, right. yeah, basically, if you have the ability to say we want this much, you know, we've got this much potential demand, it then uh, becomes much more interesting okay. to investors and to funders. But because. if we do some education first, we'll get a better survey well, quality that response. Well, most definitely. Yeah. And having this document. Yes. But this could even help you figure out where you need to do your education because if you only get three responses okay. from Callus, I mean, and, and, and you know that. What's, what's that about? And it also answers the question. I mean, Stephen, I think one of the meetings earlier says, what kind of services are we offering? This is a way to find out. I will not take your thing unless you give me TV. I'll offer a TV package. That's the question I didn't get to answer. Ask EC Fiber is how how did you how have you gotten this far without having a TV package? Well, you just saw it. They make seventeen percent coverage in cable. I can, I can actually answer that. I asked okay. that question when I was down there, and they <laughs> said when people ask them, they essentially hand them a packet of information about the different offers. over the top services. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they go. Uh, that's, that's, that's what, what they these guys did too. Direct TV yeah, and, they do, and Netflix yeah. and whatever yeah. and. And, here it is. And, and, and they say, 
and, and they still have you know massively high um, reviews of, of their subscribers, and their subscribers aren't aren't. I was not hearing that their subscribers were griping about you know not having some specific package or the other. But he does. They do have pretty poor connectivity. I mean, subscribers in areas that have cable. That's what he said. He said seventeen percent. Seventeen percent. That's pretty. Yeah, but that's, but that's, pretty, that's pretty common. That's the same number everywhere in the country, roughly. But that creates a second-class citizen as far as breaking news, too, yeah. or live state house. Yeah, it's just one of those things. That I, but we, but that there's a lot, of education, a lot of education involved, and, and yeah. things don't, won't necessarily stay at 17%. After after we've been out there and it's been working, oh, yeah, and, 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 I, and I you know I really think you know the the, the you know both the economy part, economic part, but the health services, medical services, oh. use of this kind of technologies, things we haven't even thought. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there's a, there's a huge amount of uh, news recently about the uh, number of people, especially in younger demographics, who are cutting the cable. Altogether, they, they want the internet, the, uh, the television services. It's, and it's, it's he, he, he said the, it's the people who want sports. Mm -hmm. yeah, the guy he's from EC Fiber. Yeah, it's, but, that was about it. So, but wait a minute, I called him today because there's an RFP out on the street that I thought they'd be interested in. And they, were, they have a woman who has worked on five or six municipal fiber projects, and he said. They'd be willing to patch her into a phone call to explain her experience with the communities that she's worked with, the pros and cons. And I said, we'd probably be interested in that. I don't know exactly how we want to take advantage of that opportunity in terms of experience that they have had with you know, municipal fiber. And probably as we get closer to like RFP for engineering, things like that. I mean, un unless there's... Well, they probably want to get on it again. This is, this is a yeah. freebie. But, but yeah. so I, I think you write the best RFPs when you understand you know, who, the, who the players are and what they're looking for. And yeah. and, and you, usually, you, uh, for good RFPs, you want to be inviting the potential bidders in to help you write the RFP yeah. because... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Anyway, so that was the other thing I wanted to today. Cool. I think this is an aw this is awesome. This is awesome. I and you know, yeah, super helpful. We're gonna we're gonna keep going back to this as we as we move on. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on. Is there a uh, if you're done? Mm -hmm. is, is there a round table additional discussion that we need to have about something? Are there any action items on this? Sorry to just to. Uh, it's going to be put in our archives. Okay. Along with the other two pieces of information. Okay. Well, that was interesting on the map, and I, I mean, and the data table, and we got this from the public service department. Is that the number of uncertain? I put the number as well as the percent, and it's really interesting that the number is pretty round, round about the same thing. I think it's like six hundred customers per town. It wasn't. That is mm -hmm. that is strong. Yeah. Um, so does that help decide, you know, we, I don't know where we're going to go in terms of planning and deployment and prioritizing, but it was pretty interesting to see how that worked. How many customers does EC Fiber have? 2,000. Yeah. 2,000? Close so to three, three, I think. Yeah. There's, there's a similar a similar amount. Yeah, and this is people who don't, this isn't, I mean, there's people that, a lot of people that already have service that they would join us, but the one thing that's interesting is Elmore, Orange, and what's the other purple one? Purple? Roxbury. 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 Yeah. <laughs> These are really outlying members of this mm -hmm. district. Mm -hmm. And so and I think um, EC Fire just said that they were to do it again, they go to the least served communities. Yeah. And we're talking about some least served communities that are pretty far out there. Right. Unfortunately, we are not clustered in the center. And in terms of as we evolve a discussion on what is our sequence, is that the same model we want to use or not? Or do we really need a bigger bang, you know, a bigger bang from investment? Can you, can, you, can you start in three areas and spider out from there? Does it have, does it have to be, you know, you know, please? Especially when you're leasing fiber that's already there, you can do all kinds of creative things. And, and that's, that would argue for the, with the, the urban, the Montpelier Barry, Waterbury. Barry, Barry Montpelier Waterbury would 
generate the most revenue, which would then sub so that, the it maybe it's the harder sell. So, but that's where the planning piece right. has to come in. You know, how do we decide that? What criteria want to use? See, so, so if taking BCA fiber experience and just like I said, listening yeah. to these guys, your your no density, low density towns, you basically will have people throwing money at you to get it. Now, this is a small island. <laughs> No, no, I mean, but it, it's it's not that difference, you know, in no. in, in, in population than Elmore or uh, yeah, so, so, in terms of running. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah, cost of building a roster in Elmore are going to be slightly higher than building on that island. I think. One one thing might, that might be interesting after talk, hearing from um, EC Fiber where they talk about it, it's businesses, home businesses, would be to see where right. where they're where they're incorporated. Um, and then you can lay it's out the top. Survey, I was going to say. Because many people that work from home, it's, yeah. not, it's not incorporated at the house. I work from home. It's a Virginia company. Yeah. Yeah, so that, but that's just the question is, do I work? Do you work from home? Yeah. Yeah, that's why it's and, a And I would think given the, the whole thing with the governor's push for trying to attract, new, the, you know, there, there ought to be some. Did you read the Times Argus today? I wish there's, there's a, a great quote from me. Same that. Yeah, yeah. I wish it, the only problem with that whole article is the difference between employee and labor force. <laughs> Neither the newspaper or the government got it right. <laughs> yeah. no, so so what, what I said was that, you know, why are we incentivizing people to move, move here to become remote workers for jobs that require high speed internet yeah. when we don't have high speed internet? Right. That's good. No, I, yeah, put it in space. But I have a woman running for governor off of the, the Democrat right. that's trying to get yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what she's saying. Yeah. I mean, it, it's obvious. The, and, and so I, I think look, also looking at something like, like Roxbury, it's, um, it adjoins EC fiber territory. There's fiber right there, right over there. Mm -hmm. Can I raise a, an issue that we need to be thinking about and, rec and deal with? We're talking about markets and development. Williamstown is part of Central Vermont Fiber. Washington is not. Washington is also an orphan. It's not an EC Fiber either. So I think we need to consider re recruiting Woodbury, Washington, and Waterbury into this district. Moortown, I've talked to, there serves two thirds of that is served um, by Wakesfield Basin. Okay, yeah. So yeah. Moortown can go either way. But it wouldn't be hard to. So let, last I heard, Wartown was going to put joining Central Vermont Internet onto the November ballot. Oh. Wow. Okay. Um, Washington. Their representative I talked to today didn't know anything about it. Okay. That, so I, and maybe they changed their mind. Well, Washington, um, the select board knows about it, and I expect we'll probably be voting on it before long. I, 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 I've not been told that there's an agenda item, but I did talk to two different residents there that want. Move that forward. Woodbury? And uh, Waterbury. I wrote that down. I didn't write Waterbury. No, no, I wasn't talking to you. I was yeah. talking to if you, if you had made any contact. Water, Waterbury's got no. Comcast, right? I heard from somebody from Woodbury back in December. And I said, here's what you got to do. If you have set up a meeting, I will show up and have to know that they back. It's really hard. Um, I, I have not reached out to Wheatsfield, Warren, yeah, I, no, no. They don't know about that. SNAP, they so don't. they have the opportunity to uh, make their move. Our next meeting the, would be, I think, let's see, today's the second, no, yeah, today's the second, so it's the first, today's the first Thursday of the month, the next one is the 6th of September. The Thursday's up work for me, typically. Okay. My book. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. If, it's, if it's five to seven, I can do it. My book group's at seven thirty. We can we can just go to your book club. Yeah, yeah. it's fun. Special. Okay. What do you do? Okay. The uh, room. Uh, room. Never mind. It's... Everybody has to use Kindles though. <laughs> okay, so fire park. If that's the time, it works. What did you propose? I the sixth. The sixth of September, okay. which is the first Thursday. And our. Are you going to be able to be so generous to have this space available again? If it's, yeah, sure. I'll say if, if, it, if, it, if it doesn't work, this small of a group, Thursday nights are open at the tunnel office. I would, I would love to deke it a little bit to like 5.30, only because when we get um, people coming at 
four thirty, it sort of disrupts our uh, um, business. Um, well, I can do that. Yes, sir. What about this? It's not a conference room. Just one right upstairs. Um, yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah, September 6th is fine. Do we want to move it to 5.30 then? Shall we do that? Then I might have to leave it. So oh, 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 yeah, I'm going to crunch. I think, I think, we, I think, we two, don't come I think two hours was real generous, guys. I'd <laughs> love to, I'd love that. 5.15 to 7.15? Yeah, I'd love to. Okay, that works. Sure. 5.15, 7.15? can't make okay. it to Cal's in 15 minutes. No, the book in my thing. Okay. <laughs> so there's no need for us to meet sooner than... So we're going to... Oh, we, we don't have anything for board action next week, and we're not going to have... We have a report. Oh, we have a report back. Okay. Well, no action either. Yeah, we actually yeah, have, we have action. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for the board. We have action items yeah. for the board, and... Um, and we'll have more for the next, for the September meeting, and we yeah. can, by then, make a decision on a name and a bank account. For the agenda, can I send out a draft agenda and folks redline it and send it back to me, and that will be the agenda? Sure. Yeah. Right? That would be good. Yep. I'll send it plan. Does anybody want to put anything on the agenda right now before... I go. Yeah. No, I think we're good. Well, we'll we're going we're to report, report out a lot of this stuff, and, and then the board's going to add a bunch of random. Yeah, and we'll take it from there. More assignments. <laughs> so, yeah, my so, talk at the general meeting about public safety might then land in this subcommittee yeah. at the yeah. next yeah. meeting. Totally. Or a separate subcommittee altogether for that item. Because you, yeah. there's five of us, and we're going to add another. Think about that. And I want to thank it's everybody for sector. to making this from a three-person committee to a six-person six committee. Thank you, because that makes it so much more workable. That is fantastic. Thank and thank you for taking notes. Yes, thank you for hosting us. Thanks, thanks to the kids for being so patient. You're you guys are great. Are you kidding? Do you work fantastic. <laughs> we might make you voting members. Of course they're yeah. kidding. They're kids. And, and by the way, that you know, small island, but it's 600 subscribers, so it, it fits into that same model.